Okay. And it looks like we are rolling. Hello and welcome to the MMA live chat show. I'm Rich Davey and it's Sunday, October 19th, 2014. On today's show, we'll be discussing the Tough 20 Episode 5 show coming up this Wednesday, October 22nd, 2014. And on this week's episode, we've got the number 6 ranked fighter, Felice Herrig, who is taking on the number 11 seated fighter, Heather Joe Clark. Felice Herrig has 9 wins and 5 losses on her MMA record, and Heather Joe Clark has 6 wins and 4 losses on her MMA record. And for those who don't know, there's bad blood between these two ladies because they have fought before and they've kind of like... Uh, given each other a hard time in the past. Um, like I said, this fight is the rematch between these two fighters. Their first fight was back on March 28, 2013 at the Bellator MMA Bellator 94 event, and Police Herrig came out the winner by a split decision after three rounds with that fight. On today's show we have yours truly and Fred Kirby. Thanks for taking part in another show, Fred. Thanks for being here, buddy. I truly appreciate it, and let's go ahead and get started here. Go ahead and say hello to anybody that might be listening. What's happening, Rich? What's happening, everybody? Thanks for having me back, man. Okay, very good. Thanks again for being here, bro. Appreciate it. All right. Um, the rematch between Felice Herrig and Heather Joe Clark. What are your comments on this one, buddy? Um, <clears throat> I don't know, man. It's uh, it's a hard fight to call. Uh, did you see the, the first fight with them? I'm assuming you've seen the first fight. No, I actually did not see the first fight because I really didn't know all that much about Heather Joe Clark. I've um, been a little busy, but I did actually want to see it. I am going to watch it before you know things happen on Wednesday, but uh, go ahead. Did you see it, obviously? Yeah, I, I have watched it way back when, but um, it's been a, I think I watched it live that night, and I hadn't seen it since then, so I didn't remember a lot about it. It didn't stand out to me a lot at the time, um, other than the antics in the cage afterwards. It was in Bellator. And um, it was an interesting fight, man. Uh, Heather Clark controlled the first round. She got the takedown early on Felice and uh, controlled her. I think she kept Felice on her back the whole first round. And in the second round, they came out, and Felice Herring's boxing looked like it was a bit more crisp, and uh, her, her hands looked a little better. But Heather Clark was throwing a lot of really powerful, strong kicks. Her kicks looked really good. The second round was uh, pretty close, a, a relatively close striking battle. And then in the third round, uh, Felice Herring ended up dominating on the ground. And uh, she almost got the rear naked choke towards the end of the round, but she only had one arm in. So she had her arm under Heather's neck, but she couldn't. her other arm was uh, hindered. So she was kind of trying to choke her out with just one arm and couldn't quite get it, but it ended up being enough to get her the decision. But it was a really close fight, and that was, I think, in 2013. Yeah, it was. So coming into this fight, man, I don't know. I expect a really good fight. It actually kind of seemed like Heather Clark was winning the fight until not by a very strong margin. That second round was really close, but... Uh, the police definitely pulled it out in the third round with her with her dominant uh, grappling towards the end of the fight. Uh, but after the fight, um, as soon as the bell sounded in the third round, Police Herring like screams right in Heather Clark's face, like really fucking loud. And then she's like, as Heather's standing up, she takes a swing at her, Jack. Like well, and this all and this all happens after the bell. Well, well Felice, wasn't it, wasn't that Heather who did that, and then Felice retaliated? No, no, no. Felice screamed. <clears throat> Felice screamed, uh -huh. and then Heather took a swing at her. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Felice took a swing at her, uh, retaliated after she had been swung on. But Felice like screamed right in her face after the fight was over. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I I saw I saw the you know the gifs on that. Um, but I, I didn't get to see the whole fight. I did see how the fight ended, and I did see them going at each other like that at the end there. Um, but, yeah, I, I didn't get to see the whole thing there, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but that just um, – so, yeah, that was pretty much the fight in a nutshell uh, with all the drama afterwards. Um, Felice Herring ended up taking – it was a unanimous or a split decision. She won the fight uh, by a decision. Coming yes. into this fight, man – I really don't know what to say. Um, 
Elise Herring looked like she had the crisper boxing and the better grappling, certainly in that third round. But in the first round, she got held down all day long. Heather Clark held her down like it wasn't nothing in that first round and definitely held her own with the kicks in the second round. Um, it's really hard to call. I kind of want to say that I think Elise Herring is going to win the fight. I think that her grappling's a little better, and I want to say that her striking has probably evolved a bit more at this point. But um, I don't know, man. It's a good fight. Heather Clark is aggressive, too. That's another kind of big thing to factor in. Yeah, and I, and I find it kind of odd that you're saying that. Again, you know, I did not see the first fight between the two ladies, but I went and I looked at their records, and, you know, Felice has definitely fought the better talent, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, most of Clark's wins are over women that, you know, really aren't that notable. Uh, I don't know if you took a look at her record over there on Share Dog, um, but the ladies that she has wins over are, you know, not really all that good. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but that doesn't mean much sometimes, man. Sometimes, uh, you know, you get stuck with what you get stuck with, you know what I mean? And you got to fight who's on your regional circuit. And just because the quality of competition isn't the greatest doesn't mean that, that you're not a little better than that. Now, that's not to say that, that Heather Clark is, but. She looked good in that fight, for sure. She lost the fight, but um, it was definitely close. I, I, like I said, I think Felice Herring found her groove in the third round, and she definitely came very close to finishing her there again. But Heather Clark did more than hold her own in those fights. Hell, she won the first round, hands down. She got a slick little uh, like judo hip toss and just you know, controlled Felice Herring on the ground in that very first round. Yeah, I still find it kind of odd though because you know, like I said, I went and I looked at some of the, you know, the uh, information on the two ladies here, and uh, uh, you know, no doubt I'm a fan of Felice Herrick, but uh, you know, Clark has been a professional MMA fighter for four years, but she hasn't fought in about a year when this fight was scheduled to take place. Um, she did fight um, back on October 18th of 2013, and she did get a unanimous decision win over opponent, but that last opponent really had no professional fights at that time. She had an amateur record of four wins and one loss, um, and that loss was just a few months before that fight took place. Yeah, she did get the win, and she got a unanimous you know, decision, but um, you know, like I said, going back and looking at the fight that she won before that, you know, before that she had two losses in a row. One was to Fleece Herrig and um, Stephanie Eggink. I'm not sure yeah. if that's how you say her name. Yeah, but th those are both... Uh, those are both decent losses to have. I mean, right, Stephanie. Right, right, but that's what I'm saying. It seems like you know when she fights somebody who has a little bit more experience, she you know doesn't really you know perform to her best. I mean, she does take it to decision, and both of these ladies can take it to decision quite obviously. Right. But I don't know. And then when you look at Felice Herrig, you know she last fought Tisha Torres back in December 2013 at the Invicta FC seven event. And she lost by a unanimous decision after three rounds to Tisha Torres, and uh, and that was so disheartening for her that I believe that she was even considering quitting MMA until Dana White contacted her about being on this season of Tough. Um, I thought I saw an interview out there where she said she was thrown in the towel until she was contacted um, by DFW, and, and she actually said that she didn't even believe it was Dana White contacting her. Um, she actually didn't answer the phone a few times, she said, and then eventually I think her manager contacted her and said, hey, and what's trying to get a hold of you? Why don't you answer the phone? <laughs> yeah, it, it's actually Dana fucking White. Get your pick up the phone. <laughs> exactly. Man. When DFW is giving you a call, you want to talk to the man. Yeah, that's definitely not a call you want to avoid. I can see why she might have thought it was some bullshit, though. You know, <laughs> Dana White's probably not somebody you assume is actually going to give you a ring. Yeah. So you know, actually, when this fight takes place, you know, because you know, as most people know, it's not live fighting that we're seeing coming on Wednesday. This was recorded uh, probably two or three months ago. And both of these ladies, they haven't really fought in quite a while. You know, like I said, you know, Felice fought back in uh, December, I believe it was, of 2013. So she was like six months, maybe, maybe at the time, and it was almost a year for how to Joe Clark. So they both were off for, you know, quite a bit of time. Um, but in that time frame, once Felice got that fucking phone call, she... Um, really put her nose to the grindstone and started training hard. And, you know, like I mentioned on a couple of the shows in the past there, you could see the transformation of her physique. I mean, she really went all out. I don't know if you were following her, you know, 
career before this. Um, but you know, she went from looking, you know, kind of, you know, a little bit lean to looking like, a, you know, a pretty tough, you know, lean machine with, you know, lots of muscle. So, you know, I I know K KOs and TKOs are by K or TKO, but uh, man, she's looking like she could probably, if she can get it to the ground, she might be able to get a TKO. But I don't know, man. What what do you think, and how do you think this fight goes? Well, I tell you what, man. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Felice Herring is on. Uh, Anthony Pettis' team, correct? Yeah. I have a lot of respect for Duke Rufus as a kickboxing coach. I think the dude is uh, one of the very best. Look at Anthony Pettis. I mean, you look at some of the guys that come out of his gym, the dudes know they're kickboxing. They're very, very good fundamental kickboxers. And I think that um, Felice Herring seems like she's got a knack for striking. Like I said in the last fight with Heather Clark, uh, her her boxing looked really good, man. Her timing was a little bit off, and it seemed like she couldn't find her range. But uh, she hits hard, she's fast, and uh, her her punches were fluid. I think that her training with Anthony Pettis is going to end up being a good uh, a good fit for her. her. Her grappling seemed like it was on point, and if she can incorporate some good traditional kickboxing skills, technical skills with what she's got going on on the ground already. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Elise Herring has evolved more and uh, that she wins this fight by a TKO stoppage. Yeah, I think that's the way I'm leaning as well there. Um, Elise was also, wasn't she on the show Fight Girls? Wasn't that a Muay Thai show? Uh, I don't know. She was definitely on that show. It was on the Oxygen channel, I think, but yeah. I, I, I didn't watch it. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, yeah, but I'm going to say the same thing there. I think, too, um, like I said there, I just watched her progression of her physique over this time when she got the phone call and started, you know, taking things. You know, I mean, not that she wasn't taking things seriously in the past, but she really, you know, took this to heart there. I guess she, you know, decided, okay, well, if DFW sees something in me and, uh, you know, I have a shot in the UFC, then I'm going to go all out. And to me, it looks like she has, and I actually think, the same as you there. I think she's probably progressed more um, because, again, she didn't shy away from, you know, a tough fight. She took on Tisha Torres. She did lose to Tisha Torres, but, you know, again, like we were saying there, you know, um, and Tisha Torres is a pretty tough fighter there, so, uh, and whereas, you know, Heather Joe Clark had that other fighter who was having her first professional fight against her, so, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to go to, I'm leaning also with uh, Felice Herod by TKO. I'm going to say Felice Herod by TKO in two. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, man. I think Felice Herring will be the better striker, but I would not be surprised to see Heather Joe Clark um, put up a good fight, man. She's rangy, and, and her kicks, if, if, if she uses her kicks properly, she, um, she could surprise us, man. I think that this is Felice's fight to lose. But uh, Heather Joe Clark is uh, definitely no slouch and not 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 a fighter to be taking uh, lightly. So I yeah. and plus I think they got a lot of bad blood. So I think that uh you know I don't think this is going to be one of those fights where they come out and they pussyfoot around and fill each other out for a while. I think they're going to come out and get right after it with a little bit of emotion. Yeah, I wanted so, to make that, I wanted to make that point too because I think this is probably going to be the best fight of the season to date. You know, because yeah. right now the best fight of the season to date was the first one with Randa Marcos and uh, Tisha Torres. I thought that was the best fight to date, but I think this one has great potential to, you know, take that spot. Yeah, I mean, listen, <clears throat> there's nothing like a good grudge match, man. There's nothing like two people that really kind of really want to fight each other, you know. So these two girls definitely are not thrilled with each other. They've fought before. It was a close fight, and uh, they're not friendly now. So, yeah, I can't fucking wait. And, and they both have exciting styles, too, so it, it should be a super exciting fight. Yeah, and uh, Heather Joe Clark is two inches taller. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying she's got those kicks. Um, so knowing, like you were saying, uh, Anthony Pettis' team and uh, Rufus probably is going to have Felice employ a smart you know, striking game and not fall into the, you know, the fighting outside by, you know, taking the, the abuse from somebody who's taller and, and utilizes kicking and, you know, stri uh, strikes, you know. 
It, yeah, exactly. Uh, Felice Herring uh, almost had a, a, a bit of a, a, a Tyson-esque kind of boxing game going on in, in that fight with Heather Jo Clark, too. When she would get inside, she would throw some vicious, you know, straight hook combinations. But but uh, Heather Jo Clark had a lot more reach on her. So And, and she used her kicks well, especially in that second round when they wasn't grappling and they were fighting, or striking, rather. She did a good job uh, keeping Felice at range with those kicks, those front kick teeps. And she was putting some fucking stank on them, too, man. Like, it, she did a good job of that. But if Felice can break that down and, and kind of get inside, I think she can fucking uh, work her over with her boxing. I think so, too. And like you were saying before, she put you know some heavy shots on her previously in the last fight. And I think this time she's even more powerful than she was in the last fight. In her legs are, you know, more more powerful, stronger now. Her arms are much stronger. Um, so I don't know. I think you know she does have a chance to maybe rock or hurt her. I'm, and like you know, like we said, I think I think really, it's going to be a great fight. They're going to go after each other. Somebody's probably going to get hurt. It's probably going to go to the ground. And I think uh, that's going to favor Felice Herrig there because Felice Herrig is, um, I believe, isn't she better on the ground? It, like I said, that fir if that first fight is any indication, it's hard to say. She definitely seemed to be the more talented grappler, grappler in the long run. Um, she got the best of her in the third round, and she took her back, and she had great back control. But in the first round, Heather Jo Clark got that takedown, and, and, and Felice did a good job of defending. She didn't take much damage, but she didn't get off her fucking back either. You know what I mean? She, she stayed on her back that whole round. So what, was she, what was she utilizing in, the, in that first round to hold Felice down? Was it um, wrestling? Was it, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? What was it? Basically just positional grappling. Um, yeah, just basically some good old-fashioned wrestling. I think she stayed in uh, half guard most of the time. Um, nothing, nothing too extreme. Like I said, she didn't really cause a whole lot of damage. But Felice definitely looked to reverse and uh, looked to get up a couple times, and she wasn't able to. So I don't think she, you know, expended that much energy, but there was definitely a couple times where she bucked pretty hard and uh, was trying to get a, a reversal, and it didn't work for her. She stayed on her back that whole round. So. No. Yeah, I just pulled up uh, Heather Joe Clark's record on Sheridan. She actually has three submissions, so I think Felice only has one submission, win by submission. Yeah, yeah, but she, she uh, Felice did a good job of... Well, Felice of, has two wins by submission. She did a good job of controlling her when she got her back in the third round, Felice Herring did. So I would think she's probably a bit more of a, uh, of a fluid grappler, um, chains her submissions together a bit more and is a bit more offensive uh, with her submissions grappling-wise. But Heather Jo Clark definitely has a strong base. If she gets the takedown, she certainly looked like she knew what to do with it in the first round of their first fight. So. Yeah, and another thing we have to take into consideration as well is uh, Heather Jo Clark is having some sort of an injury right about the time that you're supposed to be fighting on the show. Uh, do you recall what that injury was? Or was it a knee injury, or what was it? No, you know what? I forgot all about that until you just now said it. Hell, it's been fucking nine and a half weeks since <laughs> an episode's actually been on. I, I, kind of, I forgot all about that. But, yeah, uh, I don't remember what it was, but I do remember she was complaining about something hurting her. Yeah, because uh, she wasn't training hard, and people were, you know, the girls in the house or in the gym were giving a hard time for her not really fully training and, you know, kind of taking it a bit easy on the training and riding the bike and, you know, sitting in the bath when, you know, the other fighters were actually training hard and wanted to get into the ice bath, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I do remember that now. I don't exactly remember what injury she had or what, what she was nursing, but she was definitely, she was definitely nursing something. Yeah, I, I think it was a knee injury. I'm not sure, but I think that's what it was. Yeah, it would be interesting to see if that plays into it at all. And, uh, no, no question here that, you know, the drama on the show there seems to be focused around Heather Joe Clark. I mean, it's, and it's not just, you know, one team doesn't like her because they're on opposite teams. I mean, even her own teammates are not really a fan of hers, and we've mentioned that a couple of times before, but it, it seems to be like every show, I don't know if they're pushing that angle on the show, um, but you can see on the show that, Head of Joe Clark is not the favorite of most people in the house. Well, I think they're definitely, I think they're definitely pushing that angle a little bit. But at the end of the day, people say things like that. They say like, well, you know, they only showed this or they only showed that. And I understand to a degree, 
they can paint you in a certain way. But at the end of the day, you're still saying everything you're saying. Everything that's being done is being done. You know what I mean? Like, the things that she said that rubbed certain girls the wrong way, they might have showed it, and maybe they could have uh, kept it out or not shown it. But they showed it, and that, that shit happened. You know what I'm saying? So I, and they're creating the drama a little bit. They have to. Um, that's, what, that's what the normal, everyday fan is going to want to see, the reality show fan portion brings in. They like the drama and shit like that, so um, they're going to play it up a little bit, but at the end of the day, she has said this shit and uh, I think the girls do kind of, I think she does rub most of the girls the wrong way in general, for real, too, though, so. Yeah. And also, uh, <clears throat> in defense of uh, Felice Herrick here and the panty gate thing that was going on, uh, you, you weren't on the show with us for that, but it got really heated. And, uh, <laughs> and one of the guys kind of got a little carried away there and uh, was saying things that he probably shouldn't have said. But, you know, I, I reached out to Felice Harrigan. I actually apologized to her. Um, unfortunately, she didn't acknowledge she didn't acknowledge my uh, message to her on Facebook there. But if she does listen to the show, I do want her to know that I'm truly uh, I'm sorry for what transpired on that show and the way that he called you out, not only on the show but on Twitter as well. That was... Uh, totally inappropriate. That's not something that somebody should be doing. And then using the show, which he was just a guest on the show, using the show to actually call her out and tell her that she needs to uh, come on the show in defense and, you know, defend herself, which totally wrong, Felice. If, you, if you're hearing this, uh, not my idea. That was something that was spur of the moment done on a live show, and I had no control over that. But if I did, I would have edited that out. As far as him calling out on Twitter, Nothing I could do about that. He did that on his own. So, uh, again, apologies to Felice Herrick for that. And, uh, it, you know, like I was starting to say here, um, in her defense, um, she was actually asked about the panty gate over and over again. And she was uh, quoted as saying that uh, they were actually told that they weren't going to be able to use nudity and things like that on the show. And that they wouldn't be putting, you know, those sorts of things on the show. And she says, you know, she didn't know what to do. Uh, so she just figured that when she dropped her panties, that wasn't going to be shown on camera. And uh, she thinks that they went ahead and, you know, they did that just purely for the ratings there. So she probably has a point on that. So, you know. Well, I, I tell you what. If she was bamboozled in any way, then that's kind of fucked up. And I, I, I feel bad for her. But quite frankly, I don't get... <laughs> Uh, pardon my French, what well, everybody gets their panties in such a big uproar about. Um, I don't know what the big deal I love it. I think Felice Herring has added a lot to this season. I think she's added a lot of intrigue. She was one of the more intriguing characters even coming onto the show before it had premiered. So she's um, probably the most intriguing and most interesting. Exactly. Both, and, exactly. Most, and, and, quite frankly, and most polarizing as well. <laughs> sure, and quite frankly, the, the panty gay thing is one of the bigger things from the season so far. Who the fuck cares? She's a grown woman. Like I always say, all the other antics, people get their panties in such a big bunch over it. Oh, it, it, it's inappropriate for martial arts and all this bullshit. Who fucking cares? She's a grown woman, and she's there to fight. Wednesday night, when that fight happens, if she gets in that cage and they get after it, win, lose, or draw, if she comes and she brings her all and she fights her heart out, that is all that matters to me. And quite frankly, I think that's all that matters to Dana White and the powers that be. This is the ultimate fighting championship. These motherfuckers are there to fight and prove they're the best. Not to, you know, who cares about something she did on the reality show or, you know, ha have her come speak for herself. Who fucking cares, man? Yeah, she, I, I wasn't offended by that at all. I mean, I was shocked, but I wasn't offended. And, and I offended? Think, yeah, I mean, that some people... Some people were fucking offended, I mean, and they went after her, and it was like, holy shit. And I saw lots of videos out there saying, oh, she's bad for the sport because of that. And <laughs> that to, to, to me, to me, if that, it, all bullshit aside, if you was offended by that, genuinely offended by that, I really don't know what to say. You're watching people beat each other up in a fucking cage. I mean... Come on, man! This isn't cricket. That uh, that offended you? Well, it was blurred out, out too. Here. Like I, mean, I think that's just absurd. Yeah, and it was um, blurred out. Too. I think it that is... people. Go ahead. I think people love something to cry about. People want to, you know. There's there's got to be a bad guy. There's got to be a, a troublemaker. 
and they're just pinning it on her. I, I don't see nothing wrong with what she's doing. She's adding fucking some intrigue to the season. And what it really comes down to is how she performs in the cage. So as long as she brings it Wednesday night, all this other shit is just good for ratings. Now, if if she didn't think they was going to show it and they put it on there just to boost the ratings, that's a little fucked up. You know what I mean? But yeah, I as far as well, many, that's why I, that's why I wanted to make that point there because I, I read an article over the the weekend where she did come out and say that you know she was she said she was told specifically they weren't going to be able to use things things like that, and it's not like you know, they showed her ass crack or anything like well, that. Right, right. I mean, she's a grown woman, and she made a, a, a decision to do that. I don't think there's nothing, you know, I don't know. I don't I don't get why people would need to judge her for doing that at all. I don't think it was a big fucking deal at all. Like, yeah, I mean, it was actually blurred out, so you couldn't see anything. So that's, you know, kind of shocking why people, you know, were so upset and so offended by this. I mean, you know, you, you got other shows on there like Naked and Afraid and Big Brother and shit like that where, you know, I, have you seen that Naked and Afraid? No, but I I think I seen a show the other day called fucking uh, butt naked dating or something where they yeah there's something like that out too now <laughs> you know what the fuck ever Jack and that's a reality show on you know whatever channel well and like, like I was I, saying like and then that stuff they don't blur everything out I mean you know the woman's walking around you can see her ass and that's on TV too you know so I, I got to be honest with you I don't think people were just if it, like I said if you are a fan of cage fighting. And that scene of reality television genuinely offended you. I, I don't know what to say to you. I don't buy it. I don't think they were really offended. I think people love to cry, man. People love to piss and bitch and moan about shit. And that was something for people to pick them keyboards up and start fucking complaining. Oh, she's so bad for the sport. She's so disrespectful. Who cares, Jack? Yeah, Sit on yeah, I, I tend to agree with you, too, because on the first show where we started speaking about Felice, I don't recall what, what show it was that we did. Um, but we were speaking about Felice and, and this individual who was talking about her and called her out, you know, that was on a couple of the shows, um, he definitely had a preconceived notion about who she was and so on and so forth. And, and I was trying to actually change his mind. And uh, then on the next show, when we did the follow-up, he apparently didn't even go check her out. Like I said, I, you know, I said, dude, man, go to her, you know, her Facebook page. You know, you're a big Facebook guy. Go check out her page, man. She's nothing like you're saying she is. You know, she interacts with her fans. She has giveaways all the time. You know, she supports her sponsors, which you don't see a lot of fighters doing those things. A lot of the fighters are more egotistical and about themselves. Does she do a lot of selfies? Does she use her sex appeal, you know, to try to win people over? Of course. But that's part of, you know, her persona and who she is. I mean, that's nothing to hate on her for. You know, if you got it, want it. Here's the most important point. Is she fucking entertaining? Yes, yes. Do, do we care that she takes a lot of selfies? In general, yes, we do, or we wouldn't be fucking talking about it. She entertains, man. That's what it's all about. People fucking can't stand Conor McGregor because he talks so much shit, but at the end of the day, he's the one that people are talking about. They want to see, man. He's entertaining us. You know, That's what it's all about. Of course, it's about fighting as well. But you got to keep the people tuned in, man. Say something interesting. Keep us on our feet. I love that shit, man. Exactly. Exactly. And like I said, you know, Conor McGregor, he's also a polarizing figure just like Felice Herrig is because, you know, with the two of them, you either love them or you hate them, you know? They're, they're entertaining. They're entertaining. One way, like you said, love them or hate them, they're entertaining, man. They get it. They're, you know, some fighters just get it and they make you want to care about them, whether it's you want to see them get their ass whooped or you want to see them win. They're just polarizing figures to a degree. And she's totally, like you said, probably the most polarizing figure on this cast as far as, you know, controversy and shit like that goes. Um, and, and, you know, who doesn't love that shit? Come on, man. That's what it's all about is, is the entertainment fucking aspect of it. Along with the fighting, you want to care about these people. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I tend to agree with you, too. The people are actually looking to make something out of that, which is the point that I was driving at earlier. You know, people who have that preconceived notion of who and what she is and they have a dislike for her, you know, straight away, you know, before even really giving her a chance, you know, because a lot of the media, too, you know, get on her for that as well. Um, but, you know, I, I agree with you. I think if you have a preconceived notion of who she is and you don't like her because, you know, the press kind of makes her out to be, you know, you know, a little too much as far as, you know, promoting her sexuality and things like that, um, you're probably just 
were looking for an excuse to hate on her even more if you thought, you know, that was offensive. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. I don't. I, don't, I, I just don't get a lot of this shit. Who cares if she posts a lot of selfies? Like, what, well, what if it was that? a dude, I even said this on another show. If it was a dude posting selfies of himself like that, I'd have a problem with it. But because she's a woman, and maybe that's <laughs> she'll be. You know what? Me. But you know what? Was, Not me. Not me. If some dude out there, some fighter posted a thousand pictures a fucking day of himself, all these selfies, and people fucking couldn't stand it, and it became this thing where people wanted to see him get his pretty little face bashed in because he kept tweeting pictures about how pretty he was, I love it, man. I love it. It's entertainment. <laughs> it's the type of shit that makes you tune in and go, okay, who's this guy? Why does yep. he think he's so fucking special? You know, it's something, man. It's something that makes you uh, stand out in the crowd, man. So, I, would just, I would just find it creepy if it was a dude doing it. Well, a woman yeah, doing it, I don't have much of a problem with, but a dude doing it, I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, a little, it's a little better when it's Felice Herring doing it, a little easier on the eyes. But just in general, man, people, get out there and do some shit. Make it happen. All the other people that are hating on her, if you don't like the attention she's getting, get the attention for yourself in some way. Do something about it. Yeah. Yeah, and again, you know, I, I follow her on Facebook, and I did send that apology to her. Um, she didn't acknowledge it. I was kind of hoping that she would, so she doesn't have a bad feeling about what transpired there, because I, you know, I do want people to know that shit that went down well, had nothing to do with me, had nothing to do with the show. It was, you know, a guest that was on the show. Um, apparently, he doesn't care for her. He was looking to make something out of it, and. Uh, Again, when he called her out on Twitter, that was just way too much. And then, you know, saying, come on the show and defend yourself, that had nothing to do with the show. So that was one guy who had an issue with her that decided on his own to do something like that. So apologies to her once again there. Um, okay, so we both agree there. I'm saying TKO, Felice Harrigan too, and you're saying Felice Harrigan, TKO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Felice Herring, TKO. Um, I'll say two rounds, too. It should be a, a relatively good fight, but I'll say late in the second round, she ends up finishing her off. I think so, too. Yeah. All right. Well, um, don't know what else is happening on that show because uh, it's been on hiatus for a while now. I probably have more that I wanted to speak about, but I can't remember what happened on the last show. Um, so they probably teased this show here. Um, but nothing has been released on the UFC side. Typically, they do a preview um thread on the UFC site for that, but they haven't come out with it just yet. Um, so I don't recall what it actually was going to be happening on, on this episode other than the fight between Felice and, uh, and uh, Heather Bill Clark. Um, anything else that you want to comment on before we go about uh, the tough 20 episode 5 show? Nope, nope. It just should be a good episode. I'm fucking pumped. It's been like two weeks since we've got a new episode, so... Uh... I think that uh, this might be one of the most viewed episodes of the season two, not only because it's going to be a, a good fight with a lot of bad blood, but just because I think people are going to be kind of fiending for a fix. Um, it's been two weeks, so I think people are ready to watch some Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, and I think actually this fight is going to you know, spark some more interest in the show because there was a couple of fights that we had in the road there that weren't all that good. Um, you know, they were a little... Uh, Anticlimactic, you know. You can yeah. say to be kind, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I hate when people get uh, so caught up and think, you know. It's like if, if one event happens and it's kind of a shitty event, everybody gets up in arms and all, uh, all these boring fights and blah blah. Not every fight's going to be great. Sometimes you just got to wait out. Every once in a while, fights are going to be a little lackluster. But you know, good fights are coming. These are the sixteen, the sixteen best, you know, fighters in that division. If you get a couple of lackluster ones here and there, don't let it detour you. There are going to be some good fights this season. Yeah, and I was just wondering if maybe that was due to the way that they did the seeding and the matching up of, you know, number one against 16, two against 15, and so on. And I was yeah, just wondering yeah. if that maybe had anything to do with that because, uh, you know, Miranda Marcos kind of blew that theory out of the, the water on the first episode. But uh, but after that, uh, it kind of seemed like that's the way that it was going. That you know, the much better fighter was winning. The fighter who was, you know, higher seated was getting the win rather easily. I always say it, man. I always say it, and we've seen it in the last fight with uh, Angela Hill and Carla Esparza. Styles make fights. Yeah. Styles can make fights very one-sided. They can make them very even. They can make them very interesting. 
It just depends on how somebody's styles match up. Sometimes people win fights that they ain't got no business winning, but because their style matches up perfectly with this other person, um, they win. Or sometimes people just put on two, you know, a, a hellacious fight because their styles mesh well together. Sometimes people are kind of uh, boring because their styles just don't jive right. It all comes down to the two people fighting and how they match up right. So this fight should definitely, like you said, ignite a little bit of passion for this season because I think this one's going to be a fucking barn burner. Yeah, I think so, too. I'm, I'm so excited to see this fight. I can't wait. Um, Me too, man. And Carla Esparza, damn it, she looked like a beast on that uh, that last episode where she had the fight with uh, Angela Hill. Yeah, yeah. Um, her grappling was on point. Her wrestling was nasty. And, uh, yeah, she looked like she was all fucking low for Angela Hill. When she got her hands on her, she was all over her. So, or, you know, listen, the number one seeding in that case was truly, absolutely justified. Yeah. Well, I, I, I hope, um, oh, yeah, I do know what's happening on this show. I just, I just remembered. <laughs> because one of the ladies winds up <coughs> having an in, a knee injury and has to drop out of the competition of the tournament. So somebody else is going to be coming back in, and we did speak about that briefly on the last talk show that we did. Um, but more than likely, I was kind of hoping that Angela Hill would, you know, get another shot to come back and maybe, you know, fight somebody else that, you know, wasn't the number one ranked fighter because I still don't believe that Angela Hill is ranked, you know, should be ranked number 16. Um, you know, like I said, some of the things that I saw, you know, with her uh, videos, the highlight videos and some of the training that she did with the kicking that she was doing, I was actually expecting her to, you know, to employ, you know, more leg striking and, and body strikes with her legs there. Um, but that just didn't pan out for her because she threw, you know, a, a midsection body kick, and uh, once that leg was caught, she, it looked like she kind of, a, you know, abandoned that idea of throwing leg kicks after that. And that was her, that was her demise on 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 that fight. I thought. Yeah, yeah, it, it will be interesting to see her get matched up with um, another striker to kind of see what she can do a little bit, or, or at the very least, not such a fucking imposing grappler, not the fucking best grappler in the fucking division. Uh, so, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so I'm thinking it's the, whoever's going to come back, it's either going to be one or two people, in my opinion. It's either going to be Tisha Torres or Angela Hill. Love to see Angela Hill get the shot to come back. Yeah, yeah, I would say I, I would say either one of them too. Too that makes both of those make perfect sense. And the only reason that I think it might be Angela Hill is because after uh, Tisha Torres lost the fight, she was saying that she was struggling with an injury. So that's the only thing that makes me think maybe Angela Hill might be coming back. Yeah, that would make perfect sense then too if Tisha. Because I was going to say I would think Tisha Torres would actually get the the bump up just because she was so highly rated before. And, you know, most of these girls are going to get their opportunity again. I don't think Angela Hill has nothing to worry about. I think, uh, you know, she'll probably be on the undercard of, um, you know, the, 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 the finale or whatever. So she'll get another, she'll get another opportunity, I would say. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. But all these women that are on this season of Tough, they've already been signed to the UFC, so... I don't believe any of them are going anywhere, maybe with the exception of one that I won't mention because um, I don't want to insult anybody. But uh, I think maybe there's one fight that probably should not be fighting in the UFC that's been on the show so far. Well, we haven't seen everybody fight yet either, so we'll yeah. speak too soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, bro. Uh, thanks for showing up. Um, just want to say thanks to everybody for supporting the tough shows that we're doing. They're getting a great response from the viewers. Um, they're doing much better than the shows that we're doing as far as predictions in the post-event shows. So it seems that this season there's a lot of interest in the, uh, the women fighting on tough. So, again, thank you, everybody, for listening and supporting the show. Um, if you would like to join us on the shows, uh, just go to our site, MMA Chat, create an account there, um, and then just let me know that you want to be on the show, and we'll do our best to get you on the show. Uh, we have to give you access to the hidden area of the site where we plan things. And we can't do that until you create an account there. Uh, so thanks, everybody, again, for listening and supporting the shows. And uh, anything that you want to say in parting here, Fred? No, sir. That about covers it. All righty. All right, buddy. I guess we'll do a show in uh, another couple of days or so, maybe tomorrow or the next day. So uh, until then, I'll see you next time, bro. All right, brother. Sounds good, man. See you next time. All righty. Have a good one. Later. Bye-bye.
Okay. And it looks like we are rolling. Hello and welcome to the MMA Live Chat Show. I'm Rich Davey and it's Sunday, October 19th, 2014. On today's show, we'll be discussing the Tough 20 Episode 5 show coming up this Wednesday, October 22nd, 2014. And on this week's episode, we've got the number 6 ranked fighter, Felice Herrig, who is taking on the number 11 seated fighter, Heather Joe Clark. Felice Herrig has 9 wins and 5 losses on her MMA record, and Heather Joe Clark has 6 wins and 4 losses on her MMA record. And for those who don't know, there's bad blood between these two ladies because they have fought before and they've kind of like uh, given each other a hard time in the past. Um, like I said, this fight is the rematch between these two fighters. Their first fight was back on March 28, 2013 at the Bellator MMA Bellator 94 event. And Felice Herrig came out the winner by a split decision after three rounds with that fight. On today's show we have yours truly and Fred Kirby. Thanks for taking part in another show, Fred. Thanks for being here, buddy. I truly appreciate it. And let's go ahead and get started here. Go ahead. And... It was a unanimous or a split decision. She won the fight uh, by a decision. Coming yes. into this fight, man, I really don't know what to say. Um, Lise Herring looked like she had the crisper boxing and the better grappling, certainly in that third round. But in the first round, she got held down all day long. Heather Clark held her down like it wasn't nothing in that first round and definitely held her own with the kicks in the second round. Um, it's really hard to call. I kind of want to say that I think Felice Herring is going to win the fight. I think that her grappling's a little better, and I want to say that her striking has probably evolved a bit more at this point. But um, I don't know, man. It's a good fight. Heather Clark is aggressive, too. That's another kind of big thing to factor in. Yeah, and I, and I find it kind of odd that you're saying that. Again, you know, I did not see the first fight between the two ladies, but I went and I looked at their records, and, you know, Felice has definitely fought the better talent, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, most of Clark's wins are over women that, you know, really aren't that notable. Um, I don't know if you took a look at them. It looked like it was a bit more crisp, and uh, her, her hands looked a little better. But Heather Clark was throwing a lot of really powerful, strong kicks. Her kicks looked really good. The second round was uh, pretty close, a, a relatively close striking battle. And then in the third round, uh, Felice Herring ended up dominating on the ground. And uh, she almost got the rear naked choke towards the end of the round, but she only had one arm in. So she had her arm under Heather's neck but she couldn't, her other arm was uh, hindered, so she was kind of trying to choke her out with just one arm and couldn't quite get it, but it ended up being enough to get her the decision. But it was a really close fight, and that was, I think, in 2013. Yeah, it was. So coming into this fight, man, I don't know. I expect a really good fight. It actually kind of seemed like Heather Clark was winning the fight until not by a very strong margin that second round was really close but uh the police definitely pulled it out in the third say hello to anybody that might be listening what's happening rich what's happening everybody thanks for having me back man okay very good thanks again for being here bro appreciate it all right so, um the rematch between felice herrig and heather joe clark what are your comments on this one buddy um, <clears throat> I don't know, man. It's uh, it's a hard fight to call. Uh, did you see the the first fight with them? I'm assuming you seen the first fight. No, I actually did not see the first fight because I really didn't know all that much about Heather Joe Clark. I've um, been a little busy, but I did actually want to see it. I am going to watch it before you know things happen on uh, Wednesday. But uh, go ahead. Did you see it? Obviously. Yeah, I I have watched it way back when, but um, it's been a. I think I watched it live that night, and I hadn't seen it since then, so I didn't remember a lot about it. It didn't stand out to me a lot at the time, um, other than the antics in the cage afterwards. It was in Bellator, and um, it was an interesting fight, man. Uh, Heather Clark controlled the first round. She got the takedown early on Felice and uh, controlled her. I think she kept Felice on her back the whole first round. And in the second round, they came out, and Felice Herring's boxing round with her with her dominant uh, grappling towards the end of the fight. Uh, but after the fight, um, as soon as the bell sounded in the third round, Felice Herring like 
screamed right in Heather Clark's face, like really fucking loud. And then she's like, as Heather's standing up, she takes a swing at her, Jack. Like, well, and this all and this all happens after the bell. Well, well, Felice, wasn't it, wasn't it Heather who did that, and then Felice retaliated? No, no, no. Felice screamed. <clears throat> Felice screamed, uh -huh. and then Heather took a swing at her. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. Then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then Felice took a swing at her, uh, retaliated after she had been swung on. But Felice like screamed right in her face after the fight was over. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I saw I saw the you know the gifs on that, um, but I, I didn't get to see the whole fight. I did see how the fight ended, and I did see them going at each other like that at the end there. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't get to see the whole thing there. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but that just, um, so yeah, that was pretty much the fight in a nutshell uh, with all the drama afterwards. Um, Felice Herring ended up taking, I 